Hi, it's John Joyce here from Perpetual's content team, and I'm delighted to be joined by Everett Yan O'Neill from World Vision. He's talking to us today about the perfect storm of issues facing the globe and what we as individuals can do to fix them. So EJ, first, thanks for joining us. Let's ask the big question first, is what do you think are the, the big issues facing us around the globe today? I think the biggest issue is that there are so many big issues and we have difficulty coping with them, dealing with them all at once. So we're good at um, picking one, getting angry at one particular topic, be it either climate change or the rise of the Chinese economy or uh, uh, automation, making, you know, uh, creating unemployment. You can get angry at many different issues, but the big issue is we can't ignore any of them. And so it requires a kind of scaling of our thinking to and a new way of dealing with complexity that we can look at these different issues, see how they are interlinked, see patterns, see how we can solve them without getting too nervous about them because there's a high level of uncertainty for each of these issues. The other thing is that uh, in the mentality that we also need to preserve is you cannot only scale your thinking, we cannot only think planetary, we also need to come home and be home somewhere locally and that's actually what the populists call out and emphasize, but that's another complexity. You have the global issue that needs to be solved and you have the local culture that needs to be preserved to feel at home somewhere on the planet. What's the most underestimated issue out there, the one that could catch us all by surprise? Um, I would say it's um, that um, we won't be able to serve our self-interests as nations without fixing the planet. And uh, what's the complicated thing here? That is that uh, democracies choose leaders to serve the self-interest of, of their nation. But there's no democracy um, choosing leaders and holding them accountable for the global uh, interests. So what we have is a bunch of egoists having to solve the planet, all thinking about their national self-interest. That is not a sustainable thing. What are the things we can be more hopeful about? What are the optimistic areas? We ah, can good question. Focus on? Very good uh, developments going on. Um, I would say one of the most amazing is 18, in 1800, 90% of the world lived in extreme poverty. Not only in, uh, elsewhere, also in the West. 90% lived in extreme poverty. Now it's only 10%. Can you imagine? Just 200 years. And actually most of the progress happened in the last couple of decades. That means all these people that saw this progress, that felt this progress, this economic progress, starting to live an early stage of middle class life, these people are in a sentiment of hope. They're not fearful like us in the West, they're hopeful. We're the ones being fearful because we are in the situation of little to gain and lots to lose. Most of the people in the world have a lot of reasons to be hopeful and planning for the future. This is a, my left field question. So you could argue that since 1946, there's been an, you know, the UN and organisations like that that have been seeking global cooperation. Yeah. And you could make an argument that they've worked to a certain extent, but not as much as we'd like. Yeah. How do we move that? How do we move to the next level? Well, if you look at the United Nations, you will see there's a huge bias for Western influence. So uh, one of the major, major, major challenges of the future is to create a global um, democratic entity that truly respects all nations and not only um, you know create that special seat for western na nations who happen to win a, a war of 70 years ago now we need westerners having the guts to update the the global entity called united nations or create something else but have something that truly represents the nations of the globe the only way for the future to, for, to be sustainable and to be peaceful is by seeing the West pr creating space for the rest. 15 second answer, what can financial services companies, financial services industry do to make the world a better place? You need a very predictable financial services for uh, entrepreneurs to feel safe, to take risks, to move forward, so that they, they know they can rely on that, on that very stable system. Um, so I would say uh, it's not the most exciting, but if a boring, predictable financial service is the best way for others to be entrepreneurial. Fantastic. Thank you very much for your time.